So the dust is settled. We know that everything is all well and good with Carter Storacci, and he intends to wrestle at the NCAA championships. But how strong is that leg? Is he going to be 100% going into Kansas City? You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So we know that Carter Scaracci is going to be in the lineup, and that makes Penn State at full strength going into the NCAA championships. Locked on Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These new days, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And the voice of Penn State Wrestling is back. He will be out in Kansas City for all of it, the three day affair for the NCAA championships. And that is Jeff Byers. Jeff, we're going to talk about all the weight classes individually. Also, talk about if Penn State will set records at the NCAA tournament in a two part episode series to preview the NCAA championships. How about we begin with the Carter Storacci situation as we now have a bunch of clarity. We heard from Carter himself, and I, I've devoted so many episodes to this and so many segments to it, but I think people want to hear from somebody who's more aligned with Penn State Wrestling, close to it, sees all the action as well. From your perspective, what what was your take from, from start to finish when you heard about Carter being away from the team, still having to call the Big Ten tournament, and then actually getting to listen back to what Carter said uh, in that presser, in that interview, when all was said and done. Yeah, I, I think a, a couple of things, and you know, Kale touched on it uh, too, even at, at the Big Ten mm-hmm. uh, championships on Saturday night, is that you know, part of what makes Carter Storacci so good and, and who he is is yep. that competitive fire. And anytime anybody is trying to do anything uh, to squelch that desire to compete. Uh, it, it rankles him, and and again, that at mm-hmm. the end of the day, uh, I think is a a good thing. I mean, that's what you want in, in your competitor. You want him to be right. out there competing. I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, cooler heads prevailed. I, Carter was, uh, it is fair to say, fired up on on Saturday mm-hmm. and not happy with uh, Kale Sanderson and, and the decision. Uh, and it wasn't just Kale's decision. I mean, it wasn't like Kale mm-hmm. arbitrarily said, "Hey." I think I'm just not going to let Carter wrestle, right? Like this was in consultation uh, with the medical staff on the advice of the medical staff, talking with all of the assistants and and watching Carter as he progressed through the week. And he had made a lot of progress. And I think Carter was feeling uh, like, hey, because of that progress, right? My knee's good enough. I, I can go win a Big Ten title. And the issue is... Uh, well, it's twofold. One is that the knee was not fully healed, and it won't be fully healed at NCAA's. But that additional time is significant. It is going to be more healed at NCAA's uh, than it, it was, obviously, heading into Big Tens. Yeah. And, and so, in addition, if you allow him to compete, uh, again, it's a risk-reward thing, right? The, the, the best-case scenario is he does what he said he would do, and that is not allow anybody to get to the knee and go win the Big Ten title. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario. Well, that would be great. Obviously, it's a nice uh, another uh, feather to have in the cap for Carter Storacci. But at the end of the day, Carter Storacci isn't going to be remembered for how many Big Ten titles he won. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's going to be remembered as, you know, just a fierce competitor and then ultimately will be measured by whether or not he gets a fourth NCAA title and potentially even down the road a fifth. So, um, and the risk though was, hey, you re-aggravate that knee to the extent that you can't compete in the NCAA Mm -hmm. tournament. Well, there isn't anybody anywhere who would not have criticized Rightfully so, the Penn State coaches had that scenario played out for allowing it, uh, yeah. even the, the possibility for it to happen. So, you know, there's no question the coaches and, and the uh, Penn State staff made the right decision. Uh, and I think Carter, after allowing himself to, to calm down, again, I think he was fired up because he felt the knee 
was felt good enough that he could good go. Enough. Yeah. And he wanted to go. I mean, I, there's no question about that. Uh, and he was planning on going. I mean, it, he prepared all week with the idea that he was going to compete. Um, but again, now I think you, you hopefully channel that fire, and I think he will, uh, into the NCAA tournament. And uh, But listen, he, he's going to have to adjust his style a little bit um, again, mm. I don't, I don't know what the percentage is. I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, well, what, what percentage is the knee? I, I don't, I genuinely don't know. I, I don't, I don't know that the medical staff or that Carter yeah. can, can even tell you that. I, I don't know what. Percentage. He says he's good. That's all that matters is he yeah. says he can do everything. Yeah. And, and the key for him again is to go out and just find a way, right? Like mm. at this point, it's just find a way. And I think he has a better chance now having been able to, to rest up a, a little bit more and, and not put the uh, the knee in jeopardy, uh, he has mm -hmm. a better chance to go out and compete at a high level at the NCAA championships. And at the end of the day, uh, again, it, it, it's not that Kale Sanderson or Penn State or anybody for that matter don't think dual meets aren't important, don't think the Big Ten uh, tournament is important, but it's like mm -hmm. any sport – Right, like in in the NFL, a big regular season game between yeah. the Steelers and Ravens. Well, that's a big deal, and in the moment, you want to win that. Obviously, yeah. you've got to win the playoffs to get to the Super Bowl. But like the Super Bowl is the ultimate goal. Well, in NCAA wrestling, yes, the NCAA championships is the ultimate goal. So that is the top priority. Doesn't mean that you don't. Uh, you know, I think people. I keep reading stuff that Kale doesn't care about Big Tens or dual meets, and it's it. I just I know firsthand that it's not true. He cares very much about all of it. Right. Uh, they want to be out winning all of it. But yes, it, with any competitor, you ask them the uh, you know, would you rather, you know, Tiger Woods? Any tournament he competed in, he wanted to go win. But yeah, it was ramped mm -hmm. up with the majors, and that was the most mm -hmm. important thing. So yes, Penn State gets a little extra amped up and definitely wants to win NCAA championships, but it's not that they do mm -hmm. so um, with the idea that nothing else matters. I, that just is kind of a silly notion to me. And especially when you're talking about uh, competitors at the, you know, this high a level, they, they want to go out and win in, in anything that they compete in. On the idea that we'll finish with this and then actually start to break down each individual weight class, Jeff, but you mentioned it, the possibility, he has to win his fourth for this even to be a, a serious consideration, but the possibility of Carter coming back for a fifth. Listening to him and then everything, even leading up before the interview, that social media post, the interview itself, he gives me the impression that he's not as interested in the possibility of a fifth title, but what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's what's driving him for sure. And I do think there are a bunch of different variables and, and components that play into it uh, mm -hmm. that I, I don't think – I think Carter genuinely doesn't know now. And I think he – you know, I think if you put truth serum in him, he's leaning toward not coming back. Uh, That's what I think, that. yeah. Uh, and, and I think part of it is, again, he has some real – high aspirations both in freestyle mm -hmm. wrestling and in MMA and I yep. think it's a guy that with the, as uh, goal oriented as he is and as uh, as uh, talented and disciplined as he is he can go get all of that stuff and then some uh that being said at the end of the day do I think there's a chance he comes back I do uh because right. again it's a chance at history I think you can get some people uh, in his ear talking about the opportunities that can help open up to be the only person to ever mm. even have a chance to do something, I think is not insignificant. So again, much like the injury, I don't, I don't have a percentage that I'd put on it. Right. Uh, you know, I, if, if, you know, you ask me, Hey, you've got to make the call right now. What do you think Carter is doing? Right at the moment, right now, my guess is he won't be back uh, in terms mm. of competing at the collegiate level next season. But I'm right. certainly not going to be shocked if we see Carter Storacci at the NCAA tournament next year. I will be surprised. I, I think one of the things they're going to have to figure out with the the coaches and Carter is if he does want to come back and give it a shot. I like. I don't think it'll be a thing where he just 
competes and goes through the entire mm -hmm. grind of a uh, collegiate uh, dual season. I think it'll be much more like what you saw Kyle Snyder uh, with Ohio State do, where he picks a handful of bouts, if that, uh, to compete in and then comes out and, uh, again, competes in the Big Ten and NCAAs. Um, so I, I, it would shock me if he just is like a mainstay in the Penn State lineup next yeah. year. Uh, it will not be nearly as shocking to me if he does end up being the post -repre uh, postseason representative for Penn State uh, next season. But, uh, again, it certainly won't surprise me at all either if he just decides, listen, I, I really want to go the freestyle route and, uh, mm -hmm. and prepare for MMA as well. At the present moment, Carter Storacci is the 174-pound wrestler for Penn State, and he's the number nine seed. We are going to break down each individual weight class coming up in this two-part episode series to preview all of the NCAA championships, plus discuss if Penn State can set some records with all 10 wrestlers at the championships. 125, 133 are on the way coming up next. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. How about the Utah State Aggies? They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history they say win life go rogue and that's exactly what the aggies have done here take the nissan rogue the nissan pathfinder or the nissan armada and go find your next big adventure shop now at nissanusa.com that's nissanusa.com today's episode is also brought to you by amazon fire tv fire tv is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can just plug into your existing TV and that it provides access to millions of movies and TV shows, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into everything, game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with everything in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. The Locked On College Basketball Breakdown Show is now available on Locked On College Basketball. You can listen back wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. If you want to keep up with Jeff does outside of Penn State Wrestling, of course, you can listen to all the coverage. Go PSUsports.com, but you can listen to Jeff's daily talk show a 98.7 FM Fox Sports in-state college. You can also stream it at 987thefox.com. Braden Davis is a number one seed, and I wasn't shocked by this at all because I feel like at the 125-pound weight class, Jeff, the best wrestlers that are in this class, most of them are comprised in the Big Ten Conference, and Drake Ayala didn't win. Uh, Matt Ramos did not win. Braden Davis won. So if the collection of them are in the best conference at the Big Tens and Braden Davis is the one that comes out on top, it absolutely makes sense that the true freshman is the number one seed going into NCAAs. It does. Uh, you know, th this weight class, I mean, I think I've been saying it all year, is just, uh, to me, as wide open a weight class as, yes. as I remember seeing at, at the collegiate level. There's just... Um, a ton of kids that, uh, to right. me, are, are legitimate, uh, legitimately in the mix here for All-America honors or even for national title honors. 
And, um, you know, and Braden Davis obviously is, is one of those guys. I did mm -hmm. think his, his run at the Big Ten tournament was very promising because it, it showed that uh, kind of grit that you need to, to be able to win those close matches. And he won close match after close match against uh, veteran wrestlers. Absolutely. Uh, and really good wrestlers at, at the Big Ten tournament. So, you know, I think Braden Davis's co uh, confidence – as an all-time high. And I think he's a guy, Zach, that just uh, – it is hard to believe that he is only a year out from high school because yes. he's a guy that is really able to break down a match and get a feel for what it is he needs to do and how he needs to adjust his game uh, to to be able to find a way to, to win a match. And I thought his mm -hmm. uh, matchup with Patrick McKee, I, I thought that was uh, a really tough draw, uh, which obviously you expect uh, that you'd have a tough yep. draw in the finals of the Big Ten uh, championships. But I just thought the style there was uh, an interesting one. And Braden handled it. Uh, I mean, score-wise, it was his easiest win in the entire uh, tournament. But I just think, again, he he got to that point where he's feeling fresh, and I think that's a mm -hmm. big part of the equation here for these Penn State kids is they feel like they are you know ready to go. They are uh, feeling mentally and physically really good and and really ready to go. And I just I, I think Braden Davis has set himself up very well. Now that being said, again, I think those top ten to twelve yep. guys, maybe even more than that. There's not much separating them. It's going to be who hits a move somewhere along the way in seven minutes and and finds the the way to win. But I think Braden Davis put himself in a terrific position and has a chance to do something really special here at the NCAA tournament. Well, and that's the follow up here. Can Braden Davis actually win an NCAA title as a true freshman? I mean, his path is. I would say this top half of the bracket is very. It's loaded. The bottom half, it's not. It's not that it's inept with ta or lacking talent or anything, but certainly the top half, if you had to pick one side of it, and Braden Davis will take on Brett Unger, who was in the EIW EIWA yeah. championship and ended up losing to the second seed, Luke Stanich, who's at the bottom of the bracket there, but he could face any of the combination of rematch of Patrick McKee. Uh, there's a chance that he could face the eight seed, Richard Figueroa, and then at some point, Drake Ayala is Drake on that other side of the bracket too, but Matt Ramos has the four seed, I feel like that's a crash, crash course for the semifinal between Davis and Ramos. But again, nothing's a given when you are going to face guys potentially of McKee or Figueroa to start in that quarterfinal. No, I, and I, I mean, I know it's a cliche and it's, uh, I guess, a cliche for a reason. But the, at, at 125, it really is going to be about one bout at a yep. time. And I mean, and. Yep. You know, Braden obviously is a true freshman, isn't go going to go in there overlooking uh, anybody. And even, you know, in the first mm -hmm. round, there's a chance he'll face Tristan Luhan of uh, of Michigan State. And Luhan wrestles uh, that Mike Joyce of uh, Brown in a in the pigtail bout there. But mm -hmm. Luhan is a really dangerous wrestler. Uh, and I think that was a two-point match when they met in East Lansing. Uh, Davis won. But, I mean, uh, Luhan is, is really good. Like, there's not a gimme there. There just isn't. And I don't think just for Davis, I, I don't think there's a gimme in that weight class for anybody. No. Again, there, there's a, just a lot of really good guys. There's not a, a Spencer Lee or a guy that's head and shoulders above everybody yeah. else on paper going in. There's just a bunch of guys. And again, I thought what you saw with Braden Davis, uh, I thought throughout the season, you saw just really good progress. He worked on different components of his game. Uh, and I just, I think he's in a really good position, but it, it's a weight class that has a lot of, uh, a lot of talent and also a lot of experience. Now, Braden put that experience to, uh, to the side, uh, at the big 10 tournament. Right. And there's no reason to think that he can't do it or won't do it at, at the NCAA tournament, but it, it is tough when you have a, a run of fifth or sixth year seniors and here's the true freshman. Uh, you know, it, it, it is tough to keep going at that rate, but I just, I think what the coaches have done with Braden Davis, uh, and what Braden himself has done to get himself ready. I, I just, uh, again, I certainly will not be surprised 
if Braden Davis is, in fact, at the uh, the top of the heap when this thing is said and done. If he can get past the actual wrestlers in his bracket and does end up in the NCAA championship itself, I, I do think he wins. I, I think the wrestlers that are on the other side of the bracket, again, I mean, this is a deep bracket, as we talked about. I don't think guys like Jacob Camacho out of NC State should be overlooked. He was a former number one. Michael D'Agostino is an 18 seed. Caleb Smith is a 15 seed, just as an example there. But he can defeat any of those wrestlers. It's the ones of a rematch with Patrick McKee because it's so tough to yeah. beat somebody twice back to back like that or facing, again, a Matt, a Matt Ramos. And then Drake Ayala is on that other side of the bracket. But again, he's got to go through those respective matchups that are down there. Camacho, for example, any of his other Big Ten counterparts. So I like Davis. If he can make it to the championship, I do think he wins. Yeah, it, it's again uh, that weight class uh, to me is going to be as fun as any to watch. Yeah, uh, just again from the first round on, like there, there's not uh, a round there where you're like, okay, well the top seeds. I mean, most of the weight classes, even the ones that are deep and really good, you're like, well, at least the first round, you know, those top guys mm -hmm. are at least very, very likely to win, and, and in most cases, those first couple of rounds until you get to the quarterfinals again if you're a top two or three seed i i'm telling you in this one right out of the gate i i just i don't think there is a bout there where you're like okay well that one you definitely chalk up for this guy i just i think it's going to mm -hmm. be a, a wild one but i do uh, again i love the way Braden davis is wrestling right now uh yeah. and i love his approach i i just think he is uh putting himself in uh really, really good position here uh, to go out and, and win a national title as a true freshman, which is obviously an extremely difficult thing to do. 133, Aaron Nagao is a 10 seed, and this is, it's no disrespect to Nagao, but there is a lot. Now, you want to talk about an oversaturation of high-end talent. That is the 133-pound class. I mean, it starts with the number one seed, Dayton Fix. And just all of the potential matchups that Aaron Nagal could have as the 10 seed. Now he's going to open up with Marlon Yarbrough of Virginia. And I feel like that's a winnable one. But then he goes into the second round and he's going to face somebody along the lines of, of most likely Nazir Bailey in, in that next round. But it, it's just difficult across the board. Ryan Crookham is in your is in your side of the bracket, right? There, there are tons of names in this. Just in the 130 pound, 133 pound weight class, where it's like Aaron Nagal can go on the run of a lifetime, but the odds are stacked against him. Is my point? Yeah, I I will say uh, a little bit of an aside, but I am surprised that Crookham isn't the one seed. I don't know that it much matters. I don't think uh, there's yeah. uh, it, it's especially favorable in terms of the draw uh, for Fix versus Crookham, and in, in terms of those top two seeds. But this mm -hmm. weight class, I mean, <laughs> Vito Arusha is a six seed. Is a six uh, for seed. those that remember what Arusha did in last year's postseason and then in through the summer, like that is as stunning of a name to see beside a six uh, going into the NCAA tournament as, uh, as I can remember in quite some time. Um, and yeah, Nagao has his work cut out for sure. But he's another guy that I do think Zach is wrestling his best uh, of the mm -hmm. season heading into the postseason and and you know really had a terrific big 10 tournament uh and i think again has positioned himself very well uh to make a run now you know whether or not he's capable of winning a national title this year i'm not sure yep. i will say this is the one way where it feels like that is a, a huge long shot and yep. to me it's not as much about how nagal's wrestling it's just the fact that you're in there uh, again with a date and fix who's trying to get the only thing that's eluded him uh, to this point in his career, which is a title. Uh, Ryan Crookham mm -hmm. has just uh, looked darn near unbeatable wow. at times. Superstar in the making, yeah. Yeah, and you have Arusha, who, again, was the guy that at the end of last year, like, well, nobody was going to beat that guy, maybe ever. And now, you know, he, he's had uh, some lumps this season. But we know from what he did last year that he's capable of going, uh, of going on that type of a run. So, you know, for me uh, – I think Nagao is certainly capable of getting on the podium uh, yes. and probably can match uh, at least his number five uh, finish from a year ago when he was at Minnesota. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, exactly how high his ceiling is this year 
we, we may find out because, again, I do think he's wrestling really, really well, and I think he's going to be a tough out for anybody, uh, those yeah. top guys included. I, I just think he's the one guy – like I, he's the guy that I'm expecting to take the biggest leap from the end of this year to next, just because I think now that he's been in the yeah. program and they have that familiarity now with uh, the coaches being they, they have that familiarity with Aaron Nagao and, and what it is he can do and maybe some areas they can help him. And now Aaron having that full year in the Penn State lineup and knowing the adjustments that he kind of needs to make moving forward. Like that is a guy that I'll kind of pencil in as – somebody to watch as a, as a real big time national title contender next year. I, I just think, again, I think he has a chance to be high on the podium. I, I just have a hard time uh, seeing where he beats guys like Crookham or Fix this year. And he's most likely going to meet uh, Crookham in the quarterfinal round. Bo Bartlett is a two seed. Tyler Kasak, true freshman, is a seven seed, 141-149. Let's get into those brackets coming up next here on Locked On Nitty Lions. And this episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has the vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and might not be able to have the time or the resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They've even just launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And remember, if you're not already become an everydayer, subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Jeff is going to be calling every single Penn State wrestling match at the NCAA Championships beginning on Thursday, continuing through Friday, all the way with the finals themselves going into Saturday. And in this final segment, this is part one of a part two series, so be sure to check out part two on the other side of this episode. But we'll finish up in the final segment with 141 and 149, Bo Bartlett, and then Tyler Kasak. For 141, I, I mean, I made the comment that Bo Bartlett is a, as close to Je the gap between himself and Jesse Mendez, because I feel like if they wrestled 10 times in a row, you're going to get a split right down the middle of five and five, maybe six and four. But that's why Jesse, I mean, because Bartlett won the first time around against Mendez, and then it was a close one the next time with Mendez finishing with a victory. So that's why Mendez is the one seed because he wins at the big 10 championship and Bartlett takes that two seed. But I, I like his side at the bracket. However, that second round matchup, Jeff is the one that I'm circling before he gets anywhere. We talk quarterfinals, semifinals, anything, because I think that he's going to face a Cole Matthews who is severely underrated just because he's having a down season. Yeah, Cole struggled early this season, and I, I don't, uh, I have not heard uh, Zach. Like, I don't know if there was injury concerns or, or mm -hmm. something else going on, or just again, it could be just got into a bit of a rut. But yeah. uh, I mean, Cole Matthews, uh, you know, Bo Bartlett remembers very well uh, from a year ago. I mean, he needed a, a pretty uh, darn near miraculous uh, takedown at the uh, the end of pull off the victory there uh, mm -hmm. over Matthews at the NCAA tournament. And that is, that that's a really tough second round matchup uh, for sure. Right. That being said, and obviously real woods potentially in the semifinals is, uh, is, you know, a, a very big threat uh, as well. Yep. I just, I really like the way Bar Bartlett has wrestled from again, that final month or so of last season, right up through mm -hmm. this one. Uh, and even in that Mendez match, Mendez wrestled a terrific bout, uh, really did a good job of slowing Bartlett down and, and getting to yep. his offense, to Mendez's offense.
But I do think, uh, you know, for whatever reason, and we're hearing some things, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, Real Woods isn't 100% physically, whatever it is. And I'm not saying Woods isn't capable of going out and winning the national title. And yeah. it wouldn't shock me, but it feels going into the NCAA tournament that this is going to come back to Bartlett Mendez uh, mm -hmm. part three. And I think it's going to be a terrific match. And as you said, I think it's a coin flip type of about. I think those guys are both wrestling uh, at an elite level. Both have a ton mm -hmm. of confidence. Uh, and I, I think it'll be a lot of fun for, for fans to watch. Uh, because, again, there's not much separating those two. Um, I, I'm with you that that Cole Matthews matchup in the second round is... Not ideal. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep your eye on that. That is a dangerous matchup uh, for sure. But... Penn State's history here and Bo Bartlett's history going back to last season and then through the Big Ten tournament is that they, you know, they show up for these matches and uh, and find a way. So I think Bo Bartlett does end up in the finals, and I think it ends up being, again, just a fun match. It'll be who gets a takedown somewhere yeah. along the way here, I think, that'll uh, determine. Uh, which of the two is uh, is a national champion? But I, you know, going into the tournament, I certainly am expecting that uh, Bartlett uh, will navigate what is yep. a tricky again. One forty one is just a loaded weight yes. class as well, and especially in the Big Ten. I mean, the Big Ten just had uh, well. I mean, there's a reason they had eleven automatic qualifiers uh, yes. from the way to the NCAA tournament. So. Um, It'll be fun to watch. I think there's going to be a lot of really good matches. Uh, and again, I don't think Bartlett has a, a cakewalk to the finals, but I do think he'll end up there. Well, I would say his side of the bracket, I wouldn't characterize it as easier, but it's just a more favorable path because it's real woods, that, that Cole Matthews matchup that does give you at least a little bit uh, of a more serious look earlier in the tournament. It's not like that one's waiting in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. That's the second round after you try to get past the 31 seed. But he avoids these are these guys are all up near Jesse Mendez, Sergio Lemley, Brock Hardy, Ryan Jack out of NC State. Yeah. If I had to argue who has the tougher path to that championship, it is easily Jesse Mendez. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you there. I I, I definitely think the uh, again, there's dangerous matchups throughout that weight class. But yeah, I think the uh, I, I would agree with you that the overall tougher path. Uh, to get to the finals, uh, ironically, is for Mendez uh, versus Bartlett. That being said, again, I think either of them, regardless of uh, the path, I, I think they're both going to be able to navigate uh, their paths, and and they will get there, and we'll see it for a third time this season. 149 pounds, the true freshman Tyler Kasak is a seven seed, so I'm glad he saw a deserved bump in the rankings, if you will. He's always kind of been, he was inside the top 15 and then started to get closer to the top 10. And now, I mean, look at this as a ranking system, essentially. He is the number seven wrestler going into this tournament. As far as path goes, I mean, it's any which way. It depends as far as who is still standing, but some of the names that he could run into along the way, Kyle Parko is one of them. I imagine that he would see at some point Kyle Parko, I mean, Austin Gomez, is on this side of the bracket yeah. as well. Uh, and Dylan D'Amelio is a 14 seed out of Ohio State. So this is a very deep 149 pound bracket. Ridge Lovett is obviously the one seed. I just find it very intriguing that Austin Gomez comes up short in the Big Ten Championship. That one was really close between Lovett. We want to talk about coin flips again. Going back, you wrestle 10 times in a row between Gomez and Lovett. I feel like Gomez, you're going to split them five and five, maybe with the shade that Gomez wins six out of 10. But on that given day, love it was better. And somehow Gomez is a six seed. So for Kasak, I think this is, I think he can end up on the podium. It'll be close if he's going to finish in one of those top eight spots to get the all American nod. I could see him in the seventh place match, but that's where I would put his ceiling at this point, just because there's so much other talent and he's still inexperienced at this point. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, Zach, I just, I, and we'll see. I've, I'm wrong as often as I'm right in, when it comes to <laughs> predicting this stuff. Uh, Tyler Kasak has come on here at the end of the year, and there's just, mm -hmm. there's a little different uh, confidence and a little different feel to his game right now. Uh, and I think he is a guy that could really surprise here for uh, Penn State at, at the NCAA tournament. Wow. Now, 
the weight class uh, again at the top is really really strong and yes, uh, you know like am i going to sit here and tell you that if uh even in the second round i mean the uh uh chance lamer from uh cal poly is a really dangerous kid uh mm -hmm. and and really long like that that style wise is a tough matchup for anybody uh KSAC included but I, I just i i think the one i'm i'm really excited to see uh is KSAC uh, potentially in the quarterfinals right. uh getting Kyle Parco and and of course Parco lost to Van Ness at the NWCA All-Star Classic uh mm -hmm. back at, at Rec Hall at the start of the season but i i think KSAC will be picking Van Ness's brain about what it is he has to be wary of uh, with Parco. Now, listen, Parco is more than capable of going out and winning the national title. So I'm not saying yes, he is uh, telling you that if Kasak loses that bout, that somehow it's time for the freshman to head his uh, hang his head in shame and uh, yeah. you know crawl away. I just I think that matchup uh, is going to be a really really fun one to watch. And I, I just, I won't be shocked. I'll, I'll put it that way. If Tyler finds a way to win it, I, he's a guy that is, he's a gamer. Uh, and he's a guy that has really been training with this type of uh, opportunity in mind. And I just think he's a guy that's going to do everything he can to go out and, and seize it. Now, Parko's good enough that, mm -hmm. again, he may throw everything he has at him and Parko's just good enough to match him and, and beat him. But, um, uh, I think KSAC will finish at least seventh, and, and I won't be surprised if this is a guy that is right in the mix here for a national title in Kansas City. For KSAC, just the final thought here before we finish up part one, and then we'll talk you know more about the other weight classes, but he, the top half of the bracket, he gets to avoid, and that's why I think wrestlebacks are probably going to be so much more difficult. Again, if he is able to upset Parco, He's got a one-way path. I really believe it, but my my assumption is that he does lose to Parco, but sure. anything can happen in Kansas City. I don't want to assume one thing opposed to the other. If he does get that upset over the two seed, then it becomes actually easier to get into the championship. That is just a very high mountain to climb as a true freshman, but he's not going to face any of the likes of uh, a Caleb Henson. Now, he could see a Jackson Arrington in the semifinal as well, yeah. so those are your two, but... Ty Waters is in that top half. Of course, Ridge Lovett being the number one seed. All of these wrestlers that he, I, I don't want to say essentially gets to avoid, but if he can get by Kyle Parko, then it, it's some, okay, hey, you know, like you said, the 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 Red Sea parts here a little bit, and Kyle, Tyler Kasak has an opportunity here to really capitalize on that victory and somehow surprise and get into the championship. Yeah, and it, again, it's it's just going to be one of those weights that, that's fun to watch. Again, I don't think uh, from the second round in, uh, you know, it's not going to be shocking uh, either way here yeah. uh, in my mind for KSAC. Again, it's going to be, uh, I, I think, a move here or there. Uh, they either wins it or loses it for him. And, uh, but I just, I, I really like the way he's feeling right now, much like Braden Davis, I like the way the coaches have handled him. And I just think he is a guy that, uh, at least going into the tournament, feels like he has a, a chance to do something uh, really big here, even as a true freshman. We will take a break in the action and continue with part two of the NCAA championships, talking about Levi Haynes at 157, all the way through heavyweight and Greg Kirkley. But we will start off part two with can Penn State set some tournament records this time around? You got 10 wrestlers in the championships. And they set a points record. NCAA champions, individual record. 10 out of 10 All-Americans. Will all of those goals be met? That's coming up on the other side. So stay tuned here on Locked On Nittany Lions.